And our third speaker for the night is uh, Denise Hampson. And Denise is going to tell us about the Heineken experience, which I've not seen the slides yet, apart from the first slide, which just mentioned Heineken. And that sounds really interesting. So I don't know if she's going to buy us all a drink or something. It'd be very nice if she did. I suspect it's not that, and it'll be something different. Um, so welcome, Denise. Hi there, good evening. Great stuff. Hi, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight, uh, I'm going to explain to you how I know that Heineken is the best beer in the world. And I don't even like beer. And I'm certainly not paid by Heineken. Um, my adventures with Heineken started in February this year when I was in Amsterdam with my other half in February. Uh, and we came across the Heineken Experience um, attraction, 15 euros for a guided tour of the factory, including two free drinks. Um, the first thing we're told when we go into Heineken Experience is about the family. Um, the company stayed within the family now for four generations, from Gerard, who bought the original uh, brewery, down to Charlene, who is the current um, owner of the company. They tell us that Heineken has got smiling ease. It's a bit like saying there's a vicious wind. We like to give human traits to objects, and smiles are magical. So when you hear that, you know that Heineken is there to make you feel good. Um, they've got a secret A-grade yeast. Now, it's probably ordinary yeast, but they tell us it's a secret. As anyone on Twitter will know, we love to try and find out a secret. So uh, this is their kind of special thing that they've carried through all these generations. I met Mike the Shire Horse in Amsterdam in their attraction. It's the cleanest stables I've ever been to. And what you're told by looking at this is that they really care. Um, they care about their horses. Um, we go into a tasting room, and this chap behind the bar says, we've got these special tasting glasses from Paris that make the beer taste amazing. So, of course, I'm primed, ready now to know that what I'm about to taste, even though I don't like beer, is going to be absolutely amazing. You hold the glass up to the light, and you have a look at the golden color. Now, to me, it's just yellow. But this is the best golden color for beer that you can get. They also tell us about the bubbles. They have the perfect bubbles. If you hold it up to the light, you get to see the bubbles. Apparently in Britain, we like to eat flat, uh, eat, drink flat beer because we don't like a head on it. We think that we get better value for money. But uh, the bubbles are there to make it taste best. Um, so I've been primed um, for tasting this. And it's, it's like tasting wine. Um, you don't just drink the stuff. You actually have to sip it gently. And you've got a room full of people holding it up to the light and having a look and looking at the bubbles and the color. And then they sip it and everyone goes, ah. And I mean, I don't like beer and it still tasted great. You move on to a room where they, they put you in a rack and they shake you around a bit. And it's like a 4D experience where you watch an audiovisual on how they make Heineken. And they make you feel like you're being brewed. And then once you come out, you actually get a chance to buy your own brew. This was mine, my company, Hampson Solutions. I bought my own brew. This is special to me now because I carry all these wonderful qualities. Uh, I paid an extra five euros for this. The only thing is I didn't think it through very carefully because I flew Ryanair. And I didn't take normal baggage. So I had a dilemma at 2 a.m. the night before we flew home. I either pour it down the sink or I drink it if I want to keep my bottle. Stupid question. 2 a.m. in the morning, I'm sitting propped up in bed drinking Heineken. I don't even like this stuff. Uh, they move you into an audiovisual room uh, full of lots of displays on uh, world-class uh, orchestras, music events, sport. And you get the feeling that if you drink Heineken, not only all those other wonderful things, but you will be super successful because they like to associate themselves with success. These pods here are showing a running commentary of the last 40 years of Heineken adverts. We spent 15 minutes sitting on one, and we paid for this privilege to be drowned in Heineken brand. Now then, they're very proud of their sporting reputation with Heineken and their connections with world-class rugby and football in particular. Uh, and this room here has got lots of memorabilia that's signed and the biggest and best table football I've ever seen in my life. Um, and at the end of it, you get, uh, you get a couple of bands, you get a couple of little buttons, and you can trade them in for drinks. Now, I told you I don't like Heineken. I had one. That was plenty for me. But I thought the, uh, the buttons were pretty cool, so I brought my spare drink home with me afterwards. So what can you learn from Heineken? 
Uh, first off, tell customers and, and service users what to expect. Because if you prime them and tell them this is going to be the best thing in the world, they're more likely to believe it and experience it. Um, the next thing you can do is drown them in your brand. We spent about an hour and a half in the Heineken experience. We walked through green hallways. We saw red stars. I'd never seen a red star on Heineken before. I see it all the time now. Uh, so we were literally drowned in their brand and drowned in this idea that they are the best in the world. Give your customers your best values in spades. They care. That it's the best golden color. They have the perfect bubbles. Uh, it's a family tradition made up of lots of secrets going to make you successful. So ladies and gentlemen, go and enjoy our Heineken later. Thank you very much, Denise. I'll let you off not buying a drink because that was a yeah, great presentation instead. And I don't really like lager myself, but um, maybe I'll try some Heineken now, actually. There'll be a run on Heineken at the bar now, won't there, at the break? Um, and so now on to our, 